Yes. Where you will be known at last for who you truly are. Since the very first episode of The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, fans have been asking one question. Who is Sauron? The season one finale finally gave us our answer, but it wasn't as simple as it may have seemed in the beginning. The finale had some twists and turns before truly revealing the big bad of the season. So let's break it down, talk about that supersized cold open fake out, and what it all means for the Rings of Power. The finale really wants you to believe that the stranger is Sauron, as made very evident by the episode's cold open. He finally comes across the Dweller and disguises as Nori, and in the moments before the episode credits begin to roll, the trio tell the stranger that they are there to serve him as he is Lord Sauron. If it seems like the Rings of Power has killed its surprise too soon, don't worry. The truth isn't actually that simple. As the three spooky cult leaders try to remind Sauron who he really is through strange magic and peer pressure, Bullies, we start to learn some very suspicious truths about the supposed King of the Southlands, but it's not Halbrand's turn just yet. While the finale does answer the question of Sauron's identity, we'll get there real soon, I promise, it also seems to open up an entirely new mystery. Long ago, in our first Big Rings of Power breakdown, we suggested that the stranger seemed similar to Gandalf, but there's one big problem with that theory. In the Tolkien timeline, the Astari, wizards, didn't fall from the sky until a thousand years into the Third Age. The show is set in the Second Age, around 1500 to 1701, so we put that theory to bed. But in the final episode of Season 1, the Rings of Power throws fuel back into that particular fire. As the stranger protects the Harfoots from the Dweller and her evil companions, the trio realize he isn't Sauron. They say that he is the other, and one of them whispers, Istari. So what does that mean? Well, at the very least, it means that the Rings of Power is moving things around and apparently introducing wizards early. As we mentioned, there are some serious discrepancies with the timeline as we know it. Not only are the wizards not supposed to be here for another millennia, but Sauron's timeline is a bit askew too. In the books, he was supposed to have shown himself to the elves in 1075 of the Second Age, but he appears to them here instead. The show has been playing fast and loose with canon and timing, but this is definitely one of the biggest changes from what we know yet despite the fact that the way he reveals himself to the elves is pretty much spot on. But let's get back to the stranger's identity. While they never say the word Gandalf, the further into the episode we go, the more clear it becomes that that's the takeaway that they want us to have. In fact, as the stranger heads off on his quest with his new Harfoot friend, he tells her, When in doubt, Eleanor Brandyfoot. Always follow your nose. This is word for word what Gandalf says to Mary in The Fellowship of the Ring. Always follow your nose. So at this point, we're pretty sure it's safe to say he's Gandalf. So who is it that's really Sauron? Remember our video from last week? Well, it turns out that we were correct. Halbrand, the charmer, and the character who we were told was created exclusively for the show, is in fact the biggest big bad of them all, Lord Sauron. Though it's not until halfway through the episode that this is confirmed, there are some major clues that pop up as Halbrand and Galadriel arrive back in the Elvish Kingdom. After being healed, the very chirpy Halbrand seeks out Celebrimbor and charms him with flattery. He also convinces the Elder Elf to tell him about Mithril and soon is gifting him advice about how to forge it. Yep, it seems like Halbrand is a reimagining of Anatar, the giver of gifts, and while the timeline may not add up, his scenes in Linden are basically pulled from Tolkien's writing. In a very short span, he teaches Celebrimbor how to forge the rings and gains his deep trust. Halbrand does little to hide from Galadriel once he realizes that she's learned the truth. He tries to calm his travel companion, telling Galadriel that she should reign alongside him. Together, the two can balance the dark and the light. Obviously, Galadriel is not having any of it, but she's also loath to tell anybody that she brought Sauron into the heart of the elves' home and kingdom after the way she was treated by her kind at the beginning of the season. So she doesn't. Probably won't end great. And then there are the Rings of Power. We had an inkling that we'd see some of them in season one, but the timeline seems to be a little wibbly wobbly here too. Celebrimbor forges the three elven rings after Sauron's departure. It was Galadriel who suggested making three so that they couldn't be pitted against one another, and Celebrimbor and Elrond agreed, claiming it would create a certain balance. This is a seemingly big change from what we know in the books, not because of their trust in Galadriel, but because the elves' rings are meant to be the last that are forged, outside of the one that's going to be made in that pesky Mount Doom later on. Seeing as Halbrand and Celebrimbor were only together for a brief amount of time, it seems unlikely that the other rings that are meant to go to the dwarves and men were forged at all yet. As we leave Sauron arriving at Mordor, we can assume he's about to forge the one ring to rule them all as soon as he gets home to his smoggy homeland. Wonder how Adar will feel about that? 
That's all the information we have on the Rings of Power's biggest reveals so far. What did you think about the Rings of Power finale? Let us know in the comments. And for everything else, stick with IGN.